Okay, so today we're going to learn how to solve equations. So what I would like you to do first is do the review and then read through and answer the questions all the way up until you get to the stop sign. So stop the video, go to the stop sign, and then tune right back in. So this problem is just a reminder that if you want to find out what x is, you undo the operations and the order in which they were in the reverse order in which they were done. So be careful here, lots of people accidentally say that the answer is two, but it's actually one half, because you're doing eight divided by 16, which is eight sixteenths, which reduces to one half. So using one of those charts is not really an ideal way of solving an equation. So today we're gonna to talk about balancing equations, which I'm pretty sure is something you've seen before, but I want you to understand why we're doing the way that we're doing. So we're gonna look at our equations like they're balance beams. And just a reminder, if you do one thing to one side of the balance, you have to do the same exact thing to the other side to keep it balanced. So for example, here, if you have this equation 2x plus 3 equals 7, then you've got this 2x plus 3 on one side, it's equal to 7. Right now it's balanced. However, when you go to, if we were trying to figure out what one of the x's is, then you have to undo the operation. So you remove 3, you remove 3 from each side, and you're left with 2x and 4. So now you're like, okay, well, if 2x is equal to 4, then I want to know what one of the x's is. So if you cut these in half, cut these in half, then you get that x is equal to 2. And naturally, you're not going to draw a balance beam every single time you solve an equation. So let's just take 2x plus 3 equals 7. Let's look at it again. Now, I know that this is a pretty simple equation that a lot of you can do in your head, but just bear with me right now to make sure that you understand what I mean by the balance beam. So imagine that the equal sign is the center of your balance beam. And so what I want to do is I want to get the x alone. So the first thing I do is I have to undo the plus 3 by subtracting 3. We do that because we're un that was the last thing that was done to the variable, so it's the first thing I undo. So when I do that, I can cancel out the 3's because 3 minus 3 is 0, which just leaves me with a 2x. And then that's going to equal, go ahead and do the math, 7 minus 3, which is 4. So now I have 2 times x equals 4. So now I have to undo multiplication. To undo multiplication, I'm going to divide both sides by 2. Now on the left hand side, 2 divided by 2, well that's 1. And 1 times x is just x because the multiplicative identity property tells us that. And then on the right hand side, you get 4 divided by 2, which is just 2. So then you get that x is equal to 2. So now notice how I showed my work here because that's the way that I want you to show your work. So let's try a few more together. So the next problem, again, I'm going to draw a line where the equal sign is. Now eventually I'm going to get rid of this line, but if it helps you, you can definitely keep it. So on the left hand side is where the x is. You're always undoing the operations on x. So the first thing I'm going to undo is the plus 9. So I undo plus 9 by subtracting 9 from both sides. Now on the left hand side, since 9 minus 9 is 0, these cancel out. And I'm left with negative 8x is equal to, well, 7 minus 9 is negative 2. So now I want to get rid of x, or negative 8. And x is being multiplied by negative 8, so to do that, I do the opposite of multiplication. I cancel it out by dividing both sides by negative 8. Now notice, when I do my division, I'm using my fraction bar. Because, if you think about that, my answer is actually going to be a fraction, because negative 2 divided by negative 8 you don't get a whole number there. So now let's look at the left-hand side real fast. Negative 8 divided by negative 8 is positive 1, and positive 1 times x is x. So you have x alone now, and you get that's equal to, well, negative 2 over negative 8, because it's a negative over negative, remember that's a positive. And 2 eighths reduces to 1 fourth. And I would prefer the answer 1 fourth and not 0.25. So I want you to work with fractions. All right, so now let's take a look at number two. So number two, the x is on the other side of the equal sign. Not a big deal, you're just canceling things out on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So I'm gonna draw a line where my equal sign is, that's the center of my balance beam. I'm undoing the operations done to x. 
So I've got to get rid of that 4. That 4 is positive. The negative sign belongs to the 3. So to get rid of the 4, you subtract the 4. And so I do that on both sides of the equal sign. 4 minus 4 is 0, so that cancels out. 19 minus 4 is 15. So you get 15 equals negative 3x. And so then you divide both sides by negative 3. And when you divide both sides by negative 3, 15 divided by negative 3 is negative 5. And then on the right-hand side, negative 3 divided by negative 3 is 1, and 1x one is just x. So you get negative 5 is equal to x. And if you wanted to switch it around and say x is equal to negative 5, that's totally fine because the symmetric property says that that's okay. So number 3. Let's take a look at number 3. The center of the equal sign is the center of my balance beam. The x is on the left-hand side, so I've got to cancel everything out on the left-hand side. So I'm going to start by subtracting 8 from both sides. And I'm going to do 13 minus 8 is 5. And so I have 1 half x is equal to 5. So now what I have to do is I need to cancel out 1 half times x. If I want to cancel out a fraction, you got to kind of think about how you deal with fractions. So one way to think about this is you could say, well, I'm going to divide both sides by 1 half. But watch what happens when I do that. If I divide both sides by 1 half, then what I have here are two complex fractions. And you got to remember that what this means is 5 divided by 1 half, which really is the same as 5 over 1 times 2 over 1. Remember, because you drop, change, flip, you divide by the, when you divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the correct way to really show your work here is not to do the complex fraction. It's just immediately to think ahead and go, oh, when I divide by a fraction, that's the same as multiplying by the reciprocal. So the way I'm going to show my work here is I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 over 1. And now on the right-hand side, I don't need to write it as 2 over 1 because I'm multiplying it by a whole number. On the left-hand side, now you can see easily how they cross-cancel. This is the multiplicative inverse property. So then what these give me 1, you're left with 1x is equal to, well, 5 times 2 is 10. And there you go. So now every step that I just did there, I was using a property of equality. So the reason I'm allowed to add, subtract, multiply, or divide both sides of an equation is because of these properties. So the addition property of equality just basically says if a equals b, then a plus c is equal to b plus c. So let's just take numbers for example. Let's just say I have a very simple equation that just says 5 equals 4 plus 1. Oops. And just think about that. If I decide, well, let's say I want to add something to both sides of the equation. If I add 2 to both sides, will I still have a true statement, right? Well, everybody at the beginning remembered, uh, probably agrees that 5 is actually equal to 4 plus 1, right? Well, now think about that. Is 5 plus 2 going to be equal to 4 plus 1 plus 2? Yeah, it's both sides are going to equal 7, right? Both sides are going to equal 7. So these properties here say it doesn't matter if you add the same number, if you subtract the same number, if you multiply the same number, or if you divide the same number of an equation by the same thing, then they'll still be true. So this one, the second one is just saying it, a minus c will equal b minus c. This one's just saying a times c equals b times c. a divided by c is equal to b divided by c as long as c is not zero. Okay? So the properties here are used when you're solving basic equations. So let's just take a real basic equation like x minus 5 equals 20. If I want to find x, well, the addition property of equality says that I am allowed to add 5 to both sides of the equation. And the reason I would want to add 5 is because I'm trying to cancel out this 5, and then you're left with x is equal to 25. This step right here is me using the addition property of equality. The subtraction property of equality is when you subtract something from both sides. So suppose I have x plus 5 is equal to 20. Well, if I'm trying to find x here, I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides of the equal sign. That's allowed because the subtraction property of equality says it is. And so then when you do that, you get x is equal to 15, right? 
this step right here, where you're subtracting 5 from both sides, is the subtraction property of equality. The multiplication property of equality basically says you're allowed to multiply the same number. So this is used when you're canceling out division. So suppose I have x divided by 5 is equal to 20. Well, what I would do now is I would multiply both sides by 5. Now look at how I did that. The 5, I'm, it's like I'm multiplying both sides by 5 over 1. They cross cancel because it's like you're doing two fractions that are being multiplied. And then the 1 on the bottom just means there's 1 on the bottom, right? So then you're left with x is equal to, well, 20 times 5 is 100, right? That step right here where I'm multiplying both sides by 5 is the multiplication property of equality. The division property of equality is used when you're canceling out multiplication, right? So if I have the equation 5x equals 20, well, we're going to solve that equation by dividing both sides by 5. And then the 5s cancel out because that's equal to 1, and you get x is equal to 4, okay? So the reason we are allowed to solve equations in this way is because of these properties of equality. So of course, not all of our equations are going to be one or two step equations, right? So if you are on this page, this next page now, take, if you look down at number one, if you look at that equation, it's impossible to just start getting the variable alone because if you look, there's like x on both sides of the equation and there's x in more than one place on each side of the equation, right? So we need some steps to help us figure out how to solve this. So what we do is we follow these steps called SCIC, simplify, is collect, isolate, and check. So the reason we learned how to simplify expressions are for this reason, solving equations. So simplify, your first step is to simplify. So if you have parentheses, well, we get rid of our parentheses. So we distribute. And then, after we distribute to get rid of our parentheses, we combine our like terms. So simplify is distribute and combine like terms. Okay, so simplify, distribute, and combine like terms. That's our very first step. After we've simplified, then we go to a step called collect. And collect, we don't always have to collect because we don't always have variables on both sides. So what we do when we collect is we get the variables to one side of the equal sign. And so the way that we get the variables to one side of the equal sign is by canceling them out. So we're either going to like add a 3x or subtract a 3x. So we get the variables to one side of the equal sign. I'm going to show you how to do all of these steps here in a minute. Then once you have simplified and collected, then we isolate. And isolate, basically we're isolating the variable, right? So what we do is we get the variable alone by undoing operations. And then once we've done that, we have an answer, like x equals 5 or something like that, then we check our answer. And the way we check our answer is we plug the solution, or the answer, into the original equation. So sometimes checks are a little bit tricky. So we plug the answer into the original equation and follow the order of operations to see if both sides are equal. So we follow the order of operations to see if both sides are equal.
Now, it's important that you have these steps written down very well because you're going to have to tell me what SCIC stands for and explain as well. So this is something that you want to study. And I've even written it here at the top. All right, so now let's try a couple problems together. All right, so for the first couple problems here, I'm actually telling you the steps off to the side, simplify, collect, isolate, and then the checks we're going to do separately. But I'm not always going to have those steps. So the first problem, what we're going to do first is we simplify. You simplify each side of the equal sign separately. So the first side, I'm going to distribute the 5. I'm going to distribute the 2 on the other side. So when I distribute the 5, I'm going to get 50 plus 5x is equal to, on the other side, 200 plus 8x, and then you bring down the minus 6x. So I've distributed. Now I combine my like terms. Now my like terms, you combine them when they're on the same side of the equal sign. So you're simplifying each side of the equal sign separately. And so the 8x minus 6x will get put together. So I end up with 50 plus 5x is equal to 200 plus 2x because 6x because 8x minus 6x is 2x. So now my next step is to collect. And collect is when I have variables on both sides. So if you see here, I have a 5x over here and I have a 2x over here. You have two choices when you collect. You can either bring the 5x from this side over to here, or you can bring the 2x from this side over to here. Now what we're doing is we're moving the entire term. So we always, when we collect, are going to add or subtract a term. So if I wanted to move the 5x, I would subtract 5x from both sides because 5x minus 5x will cancel this out. And so then I would do the same thing over here. If I wanted to cancel out the 2x, I would subtract 2x from both sides. It doesn't matter which one you do. I'm going to choose to do 2x because I like to have everything to the left side. I also like it when things are positive. So if I subtract 2x from both sides on the right hand side, these cancel out because that's 0. And then you have 5x minus 2x is going to give me now 3x. So what I have now is 50 plus 3x equals 200. Now I can isolate the variable. This is a two-step equation, super simple. The x you want to get alone, x is being multiplied by 3 and then add it to 50, so you have to subtract 50 from both sides first. Remember you're doing the order of operations backwards when you're isolating a variable, so you get rid of addition and subtraction first almost always. And so now the 50s cancel out and I'm left with 3x equals 150. So now I divide both sides by 3 to get the x alone. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so that leaves me with x, and 150 divided by 3 is 50. So here you get that x is equal to 50, and so we followed all of the steps. Now we need to check. So when I check, I take the 50 and I plug it right back into the original equation, right back into this. Unfortunately, you can't put it in your simplified equation because if you make a, a mistake from the moment where you're simplifying, then you're going to get the wrong answer. And if you put it into a different portion of the equation, you might not see that you've made a mistake because your mistake may be somewhere up here. Okay, so you always have to put this back in here. Now be careful. Checks can be tricky. So we're going to take it one step at a time. So I'm going to rewrite the problem draw a line here. I'm going to rewrite the problem where I'm putting 50 in for x. So I'm going to have 5 and in parentheses 10 plus 50 equals 2 and in parentheses 100 plus 4 times 50 minus 6 times 50. And so then when I go to do this, I'm actually simplifying both sides of the equal sign using the order of operations, which remember is GEMDAS. We do what's inside the grouping symbols first, then we do exponents, then we do the multiplication addition, then we do the addition and subtraction. When you check, don't distribute. You don't need to. The only reason we distribute is because we can't actually do what's inside the parentheses. So take a look at the left-hand side of the equation. I'm going to go ahead and just simplify this side of this equation first. Do 10 times 50. 10 or 10 plus 50. 10 plus 50 is 60. So what I have is 5 times 60. 
and then do 5 times 60 is 300. So the left side of the equation is equal to 300. So now let's go to the other side. The other side should also equal 300 if I did my problem right. So let's do what's inside the equation first, or inside the parentheses first. Don't distribute. Do the math inside the parentheses. So it's going to be 100 plus 4 times 50 is 200 minus 6 times 50. Because that's outside the parentheses and it's what we're going to have to do after the parentheses, if you want to do it now, you can because that's going to be minus 300. And then finish what's inside your parentheses. 100 plus 200 is 300. So I have 2 times 300 minus 300. Now I multiply and then subtract, right? So then when I multiply, I get 600 minus 300. Then I subtract and I get this side is also equal to 300. So I'm bring this 300 down and then at the end I'm going to be like, oh, okay, 300 equals 300. And I'm going to check mark by it because I know it worked. Now if for some reason your check doesn't work out, that probably means that your answer is wrong. Or if you're pretty certain that your answer is right, then maybe you're making a mistake somewhere in your check. So it should work out. Both sides of the equal sign should be equal if you got the right answer for x. All right, let's try another one. All right, so now for the next one, same steps. Distribute, combine your like terms, collect your variables, isolate your variable, and then check. Now don't freak out because you see a fraction, right? Two-fifths, when you go to distribute two-fifths, that's not going to be a big deal because you know what two-fifths of 10 is and you know what two-fifths of 15 is. So I want to remind you when you're multiplying a fraction by a whole number, if the denominator goes into the whole number, then it's going to go in evenly, okay? So think about this, two-fifths of 10x, two-fifths times 10. Well, you think to yourself, well, what's one-fifth of 10? One-fifth of 10 is two, so two-fifths is four. So two-fifths times 10x is 4x. And then two-fifths of 15, well, that would be one-fifth of 15 is three, and two-fifths then would be six. So I have 4x plus six is equal to, over here, we're distributing the negative four. So we bring the 18 straight down, distribute negative four, you get minus 4x plus 20. Then combine your like terms. So on the left-hand side, there are no like terms, so you just have 4x plus six equals, here, combine 18 plus 20. 18 plus 20 is 38. So you have 38 minus 4x. So now when you collect, you have two choices. You can move this one. If I move this one, I would subtract 4x. If I move this negative 4x, I'm going to add 4x. I'm going to go ahead and add 4x. You'll get the same answer if you subtract 4x as well. It's just you'll be dealing with some negatives. Not a big deal. So I'm going to add 4x to both sides. This is called collect. When I do that, the 4x is on the right-hand side. Cancel out. I'm left with 8x plus 6 is equal to 38. Now I'm ready to isolate my variable. So I subtract 6 from both sides. I get 8x is equal to 32. Then I divide both sides by 8. And I get that x is equal to 4. So now I do my check. I'm going to plug 4 in for x. So when I do my check, be careful. I do 2 fifths. And in parentheses, I'm going to have 10 times 4 plus 15. Close your parentheses equals 18 minus 4, in parentheses, 4 minus 5, close your parentheses. Then simplify. So I'm going to do the left-hand side first, so I'm going to do what's inside my parentheses. 10 times 4 is 40, and because I'm doing 40 plus 15, next, that, you can do that in your head. 40 plus 15 is going to be 55. So I have 2 fifths times 55. Now you can do this in your head. Two-fifths of 55 would be, well, well what's one-fifth of 55? One-fifth of 55 is 11, so two-fifths would be 22. Now if you're having trouble doing that in your head, think about this being 15 over, 55 over 1. 55 goes into, or 5 goes into 55, 11. 2 times 11 is 22. So this side is equal to 22. The other side, don't distribute. Do what's in the parentheses. So I have 18 minus 4 times 4 minus 5 is negative 1, then multiply. Well, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4, and since it's 18 minus negative 4, that's really the same as plus a positive, right? So 18 plus 4 is 22. 
And so both sides of the equation are equal to 22. So that's now, you know you did it correctly. Now the next one, sometimes there aren't, there's not a way to simplify and sometimes you have to do an isolate step before you collect. So this problem, and it's when you have a fraction bar um, that's underneath an entire expression. So if you notice, there's no simplifying because there's no parentheses to get rid of. There's no like terms on the same side of the equal sign to combine. So now what I have to do, because I have this fraction bar, I'm going to do an isolate step first. So this is kind of an exception to the rule. So when I do that, I have to get rid of the divided by 5 to start with to get rid of the fraction sign. So to do that, I'm going to, divide, I'm going to multiply both sides by 5. And remember, when I multiply the left side by 5, it's like doing 5 over 1. So the 5's will cross cancel to give us 1's, which leaves me with just a 3x plus 8. Does that make sense? And then when you do 7x times 5, well, 7x times 5 is just 35x. So now I collect. So when I collect, in this case, it doesn't make sense to move 35x. Because if I do that, if I subtract 35x from this side of the equation and bring it over here, you can do that, but you're going to have a 0 over here. So it makes more sense to move this 3x from here over to here. So whenever you move something from one side of the equal sign to the other side of the equal sign, you have to cancel it out on one side. So here I have to subtract 3x, subtract 3x. So I always want you to get your variables to one side of the equal sign before you start adding and subtracting your constants. So now I have 8 is equal to 32x. And then, keep in mind, you're, you're getting x alone. So you have to cancel out 32. And you cancel out 32 by dividing by 32. And so now your answer is a fraction, 8 over 32, right? So 8 over 32 gives you 1 fourth. So you just reduce that fraction. So 1 fourth is equal to x. I would prefer that you use 1 fourth and not 0.25 because that way I know that you're understanding your fractions. So let's do a check. Be careful with this check. We're going to use the fraction 1 fourth. We're not going to use 0.25 because you need practice with fractions anyway. So now when I check 1 fourth, I'm going to do 3 times 1 fourth plus 8 on the top of a fraction bar over 5 equals 7 times 1 fourth. So now let's look at the left hand side of the equation. The left hand side of the equation is a little bit trickier. So you got to do what's inside the what's on the top of the fraction bar first. So you got to multiply 3 times a fourth. Don't forget that's just 3 over 1 times 1 over 4. I can't cross cancel so just multiply straight across. 3 times 1 is 3. 1 times 4 is 4 so that's 3 fourths plus 8 I'm going to go ahead and write it as 8 over 1 because I'm going to end up having to get a common denominator divided by 5. And what we're going to do is we're probably going to have a complex fraction to deal with, right? Not a big deal. We can do this. We know how. All right, so I need to find a common denominator. So let's make my denominator 4. So I'm going to leave the 3 fourths. And the 8 over 1 becomes 32 over 4. The whole thing divided by 5. And now I get 35 over 4 divided by 5, which I'm now just going to write like this because I'm running out of room. And remember, that's the same as multiplying by 1 fifth. So what I have is 35 over 4 times 1 over 5. And the 5 will go into the 35 7 times. And what we're left with is 7 fourths. So this side of the equal sign is 7 fourths, which is great because if you look to the other side of the equal sign, 7 over 1 times 1 over 4 is 7 fourths. So for your check, you get that 7 fourths is equal to 7 fourths. And you did it correctly. All right, so now what I want you to do is I want you to just do each problem on your own and then come back and look at my work. All right? So do your solving, make sure you simplify first, distribute and combine like terms, then collect your variables to one side. This one's a little bit weird because you got to simplify and then you got to do an isolate step because there's a fraction bar. So whenever you have a fraction bar, you got to get rid of it, okay, before you start getting, before you start moving variables. This one also notice there's not a collect step because you don't have variables on both sides. Okay, so sometimes you don't have to simplify because there's nothing to simplify, and sometimes you don't have to collect because there's nothing to collect. 
So go ahead and stop the video. I want you to try number four on your own. Come back, make sure you did it right. Okay, so for number four, you should have gotten x equals 32, and your check should have worked out as 22 equals 22. If you did not get that, take a moment to stop the video and look at my work. Then try the next one on your own, and then kind of tune back into the video and make sure you did it right. All right, so this one you should have gotten m is equal to 1 half and both sides of your check should have given you negative one. So helpful hint on this one, you didn't have to do any simplifying, you just had to collect, and the smart thing to do with collecting here is to subtract 16m from both sides, even though you're like, but I'd really like if everything would be positive, because if you add 2m to both sides, then you would have to write zero equals 18m minus nine, and then you'd have some extra steps because you would have to subtract, you would have to add the nine and then divide. So. What I did is I just subtracted 16m, I got negative 18m, and then you divide both sides by negative 18. Then the reminder, a negative over a negative is always a positive, and then I just reduced the fraction 9 18 So go ahead and try this one, and then tune back into the video, make sure you did it right. All right, here's the answer to this. You should have gotten x equals 5 and 47 equals 47 as your check. Stop the video, look at my work if you didn't get it right. Otherwise, move on to the next problem, and then tune back in to make sure you got that one right. All right, so this one you should have gotten that x is equal to 25. I wanna go over this one just a little bit because this tends to throw people. When you combine your like terms, you're combining negative 2 fifths x plus x. Reminder, the coefficient of x is one, right? Reminder, when you combine um, fractions, in order to add and subtract them, they have to have a common denominator. So I changed the one to five over five, so it would have the same denominator as negative two fifths, and then I can do negative two plus five to get three fifths. So then when I isolated my variable, I subtracted four from both sides, and then here, this might look a little bit confusing, I had three fifths x equals 15, and then remember, instead of dividing both sides by three fifths, I multiplied by the reciprocal of five thirds, and then when I multiplied both sides by five thirds, I cross canceled here. This gives me ones on the bottom, so five times five is just 25. All right, try the last problem, come back, make sure you did it right. And the last problem here, you should have gotten negative two, and both sides of your equal sign should have been negative 40. Take a look at my steps. I did not actually cross off some of my canceling out steps. Reminder, when you collect your variables, there are two ways to do it. In this case, I subtracted 2y from both sides. If you subtracted 15y from both sides, you should have still ended up with negative two. It just, your work would look slightly different than mine. All right, good luck with your homework.